All right, so we've estimated the deriv derivative of a function given graphically and numerically. All right, given as a graph, where the, the function is given as a graph, or the graph, or the, sorry, the function is given as a table, um, we've, we've estimated the derivative of the function. Now we're given a function as a formula, all right? And we want to estimate the derivative of the function, all right? But now one thing we could do is just set up a table of values, right? The nice thing about having a function is we can choose points that are close together and we can actually put them into the formula and calculate values, all right? So first thing I want to do is just take this function and um, evaluate two points that are really close together. So I'm trying to find the derivative at negative one. If I take two points, if I take a really small interval, like maybe I take um, x is between, um, let's say, uh, negative one and um, negative 0 0.99999. All right, that's pretty darn small, right? That's a very small interval. Um, but I can find the average rate of change over that interval. And that is going to be pretty darn close to the value of the derivative of that, func of that function, of the function at that point. Okay, so let's do that. I'm going to find g of negative one. That's pretty easy. I'm just going to plug it in. All right, I'm just going to get negative one squared is positive one and then minus two times negative one, so that becomes a positive two plus five, all right? One plus two plus five is eight, so g of negative one is eight. g of negative 0 0.99999, I have five nines, okay? So you have to be careful, because you want to have the same number of nines, right, when you add for the, um, you want to keep track of how many, how many decimal places you have here. All right, I'm just going to plug this into my calculator. And when I plug it into my calculator, I get um, 7.99996. Okay, so I just took this value, negative 0.99999, and plugged it into the, form, to the formula up here for g of x. All right, so now I can find uh, delta y over delta x. That's my average rate of change over this very small interval. I'm going to take 8 minus 7.99996 and um, then take a negative 1 and then subtract a negative. That's just going to be a positive 0 0.99999. All right, I have five nines. <laughs> okay, just be careful. Make sure you're, you're you're using the same number of decimal places. Don't round off, <laughs> all right? We're trying to get um, the, the, the average rate of change over a very small interval, all right? If I put that into my, my calculator, it turns out to be very, very, very close to negative four, okay? So I would say that's a pretty darn good estimate for the derivative at negative one. And let's do the same thing at negative two. I'm going to take an interval around, oops, no, it's positive two, positive two. Taking a, I'm going to take a very small interval. So I'm going to find um, g of 2. That turns out to be 4 minus 4 plus 5. So that's going to be 5. And then um, g at, now I'm going to do something different here. I'm going to say this is going to be uh, 2.000. Make sure I have the right number. 0, 0, 1. All right, so I have four zeros and a 1. If I put that into my calculator, I get 5.00002. Don't round off, right? We need all those decimal places to calculate this accurately, all right? So um, calculate those two values, and then I can find delta y over delta x just by taking the change in the function values. So 5.00002, make sure you have the right number of zeros minus five all over 2.00001 minus two. Put that into my calculator, and that's approximately equal to two. All right, so I've estimated the value of the, um, 
derivative at two points. And I could keep going and I could create a table of values and then I could graph it and I could, then I'd have a function given numerically. All right. So, but I want to do something fun here. <laughs> you notice here, uh, here I just like, well, let's look at the g of two. All I did was I added a very small amount, right? 0. 0.00001. That's how much I added to it. So I'm just taking two and adding a small amount. So what I want to do is I want to find a, um, uh, I want to, I want to take g of x. I don't want to find a general equation for g at x plus a very small amount. So this h is a very small number. This is a very um, small amount. So I'm taking, I, I want to find a general formula. So I'm going to take, I want to find, a, 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 so the first thing I'm going to do is just find g of x plus h, where h is a very small amount. All right, so um, now I know I have the formula for g of x. So g of x plus h, right? This is a composition of functions, right? I'm bas basically putting f x plus h in. Um, anywhere I see x, right? So I have x squared becomes x plus h squared when I substitute x plus h instead of x, right? In place of x. Minus 2 times x plus h plus 5. All right, so g of x plus h is going to look like that. Now I can simplify that. Let's, let's go ahead and expand this out. x squared plus 2hx plus h squared. Okay, and then I have minus 2 times all that. I'm going to distribute the negative 2. So it's going to be minus 2x minus 2h and then plus a 5. And now I could take away those. I don't really need these parentheses anymore. So I'm actually going to take those away. And I, I've got a couple of x terms, but they have, one of them's 2h, and one of them is, uh, you know, 2h times x and with negative 2 times x, so they aren't quite like terms. So that's as, I think that's as good as I can get as far as um, simplifying um, the formula g of x plus h. Now the reason I did that is I, that's my, um, I want to, I want to now put that into the formula for average rate of change, right? This is average rate of change, and h is just a small amount. Okay, so I'm just dealing with variables here. So let's go ahead and, and figure this out. So I'm just going to copy down my g of x plus h is x squared plus 2hx plus h squared minus 2x minus 2h plus 5. And I'm going to subtract the whole quantity g of x. Okay, well, it's up there off the screen, but <laughs> but um, g of x is just x squared um, plus 2, or was it minus? Hang on, where was it minus? I think it's, yeah, it's minus. Minus 2x. Uh, let me erase this plus here. Oh, come on, I want, <laughs> want the eraser. All right, minus 2x and then plus 5. All right. And all that's going to be divided by, this is going to get, uh, let's see, I'm going to draw a line here, and it's all divided by x plus h minus x. Okay, now I can remove those parentheses, and you can see that I can combine those x terms. x minus x, right, those cancel. And so really this is all just over h. Okay, that's my change in x is h. All right, now I have to distribute this negative. Right, I'm going to distribute this across. All right, so I'm going to rewrite this whole thing. I know it's a lot to write, but you know, x squared plus 2hx plus h squared. Just be sure to copy everything carefully. 2h plus 5. And then when I distribute the negative, I get minus x squared. Minus and minus becomes plus 2x minus 5. All right, and all of this is over h. Over h. All right, let's combine some like terms. All right, this, this is where it gets fun because there's a lot of things to cancel here. You can see there's this x squared and this minus x squared. Those cancel out, right? x squared minus x squared is zero. I have a negative 2x and I have a positive 2x. Those cancel out. I have a plus 5 and a minus 5. Those are going to cancel out. So this boils down to a nice, simpler, a lot simpler equation. We're not quite there yet, but we're getting 
get that we have 2hx plus h squared minus 2h and that's it right <laughs> I think that's it all right so and then that's all over h notice I have h in every single term of the numerator so I'm going to factor out an h and I have 2x plus h minus 2 all over h. And notice I have, now I can cancel common factors. There's a common factor of h between the numerator and the denominator. Cancel that. So this whole thing boils down to 2x plus h minus 2. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. All right. Now, now remember h is small. H is a very, very small number. The smaller it is, the better approximation I get for the instantaneous rate of change, the derivative of the function. So what happens as H approaches zero? Sometimes we write that as H approaches zero. All right. Now I can actually go to zero, right? If I put in H equals zero, I end up with um, 2X minus two. Right? Because H is, if H goes to zero, that's, I can ignore it, right? This is F prime of X. This is a function for F prime of X. Or no, I guess it's G. Sorry. It's G. G. G prime, right? Because the original function was G. So this is the derivative of that G of X function. That's awesome. All right. And what does that look like as a graph? All right. That is a linear function. All right, so, okay, I guess if you want me to graph it, sure, let's graph it. It has a y-intercept of negative 2 and has a slope of 2. So it's going to cross at 1, 0. All right, it's going to cross through these points. All right, let's see if I can draw a straight line <laughs> through those points. All right, so this is a graph of g prime of x. It's just a line. It's just a line. And... um that's awesome. Now we have a formula. Now we don't have to do that. We don't have to go through this process uh, every time of, <laughs> of, you know, calculating these average rates of change. You can, and I am getting ahead of myself because you aren't really expected to, be, to do this yet. But now if we have a formula for the derivative, now we don't have to, we can, we, now we have a function. We don't have to approximate it and graph it and all of that. So anyway, all right, this is where calculus is awesome. So um, that's all I have for you today and I'll see you in class.